So today is uh, June 3rd, and the 2014 Tuesday. So Seattle talk about the five, uh, seven benefits we can gain from development of mindfulness. If we practice develop mindfulness uh, according to the Satipatthana method uh, given by the Buddha to all of us who want to be liberated out of these uh, several kinds of suffering, mental and uh, physical suffering, and, uh, and uh, samsara. So today, Sierra would like to continue this uh, discourse uh, regarding how to practice or how to develop mindfulness or the method or the mindfulness practice. So in this universe, the most superior beings are called Brahma. One of the Brahma, celestial beings, uh, he came down and requested the Buddha to teach all living beings the Dhamma, the, the development of mindfulness that can help all living beings to be liberated out of the sangha or suffering. So Buddhas, not only our historical Buddhas, but also many uh, countless Buddhas in the universe and Abiyad and uh, taught, taught this uh, meditation. So this meditation is of a very great uh, tradition and a lineage of the Buddhas. So our Buddhas, uh, historical Buddha Gautama, also taught this meditation, meditation or the um, development of mindfulness for the uh, blissfulness or peacefulness of the, of the world, uh, for all of us to be liberated out of the suffering, mental and uh, physical distress. In this Satipatthana discourse, there are 21 sections, and uh, some of these are counted as a samatha practice, development or uh, concentration, and then others uh, as a vipassana, development of uh, insights and enlightenment. And then as a meditative object for our minds to focus, there are four kinds of objects. So the, this Satipatthana meditation is uh, divided into four kinds, as uh, Kaya Nupasana, uh, Satipatthana, the contemplation of the body, a contemplation or the uh, feeling and so on. So first contemplation is uh, contemplation of the body. In Pali we call Kaya Nupasana. So to experience the Dhamma, first we have to observe, contemplate ourselves, uh, our internal uh, phenomena. So we have to watch ourselves uh, constantly or repeatedly, and day and night. So what we observe, what exactly we have to uh, experience or to be aware of in our body? So that's the question. So regarding the meditation on breath, in and out breath, so the, what we have to observe is, uh, of, of course, breath, in-breath and out-breath. That's uh, the first kinds of meditation the Buddha expounded in this sutra to be liberated the, out of the suffering. So the Dharma can be found in ourselves. 
So what is the dharma to be found in ourself? As a psychophysical phenomena that are arising and passing away every moment, impermanence, unsatisfactoriness, and uh, everlasting, uh, no everlasting ego, divide or, uh, non uh, divide or ego or soul. So that's uh, uh, what we can find in our in ourselves or in our body. So by observing our body, uh, we can gain deeper understanding of ourselves. That's uh, what we say that we can find dharma in ourselves, in our body. That's uh, what we call kaya nupasana observation or contemplation of the body. So the, the, our body is uh, quite obvious. And uh, so the developing mindfulness uh, by contemplating on our body is uh, a very important, the uh, very important kinds of the, uh, the contemplation. Regarding how to develop mindfulness, uh, first of all, the Buddha described the place, uh, the, the place to practice, the suitable place to practice. There are suitable places to practice, like the forest, or the root, or the tree, or under the tree, or a secluded place. These places are uh, explicitly mentioned in the Pali text as the, as the suitable place for meditation practice. Regarding uh, bodily posture or body position, the, the sitting posture with the leg, legs crossed uh, is uh, mentioned. So the, when we sit, for meditation practice, uh, we are uh, suggested to sit with the legs crossed and uh, keep upper part of the body straight. And the uh, head also should be straight, but not too rigid. And then uh, we have to focus on the meditative object. So the, so far the Buddha mentioned the place, the suitable place for practice and a suitable physical position uh, for long lasting concentration. Sitting under the tree or a secluded place and a sitting uh, the, with the legs crossed uh, with the upper part of body straight. And then the Buddha mentioned the objects to focus so we meditate, uh, sit properly, and uh, focus on the meditated object. So here, the Buddha said, Primukhan. Uh, literally, me, we see the object face to face. Literal meaning of the Primukhan is uh, face to face. So we have to watch the object. In this particular case, uh, the breath, in and out breath, we have to contemplate in and out breath uh, face to face. Uh, that means uh, we have to pay full attention to the meditative object. In this regard, the late Venerable Mahasi Siaro, he uh, recommended us to focus on the abdomen where the breath is uh, entered. So the place to focus or focus point is the abdomen to develop the awareness or mindfulness and uh, inside knowledge. And also we are recommended to label it concurrently. Uh, when we breathe in, uh, we should label it rising, and so on. So we should note it mindfully. When you breathe in, the abdomen uh, rises, 
Here, Horizon Me is uh, rises or is become uh, bigger uh, outward, or maybe you may experience is uh, the abdomen rising layer by layer, or higher and higher, up and up. And that's what we call horizon. But actually, we experience uh, tension or air pressure or tightness. So that experience means uh, we kind of the insight into the body. In Pali, the Buddha said, Kaya, Kaya Nupasi, we are a So we observe physical phenomena in the body. So tension, tightness, or air pressure, these are characteristics of the air element. So when we experience these air elements, that means we see body as a body. Uh, we contemplate body and the body. So when we breathe out, the abdomen uh, loose and uh, release, and uh, it's uh, gradually fall down. That's what we call falling. But actually, we experience uh, releasing and releasing or tightness or releasing of uh, pressure. Uh, that's uh, what we actually experience when we know the falling. So that's, w that's the way we experience the physical phenomena. So when we see or discern uh, real physical phenomena beyond the concepts, then there will be no room for desire and discontent. The moment we experience or we discern real body, and there will be no room for mental defilements. So when we see the physical phenomena like tightness, tension, or air pressure, and then there will be no room for, uh, no chance for abhijja and a dominasa. Abhijja means the desire, um, mostly uh, normally translated covetousness. It's a desire for materials or for or living or non-living things, mostly belonging to other people, is the uh, uh, meaning of the abhijja. And then when we see the, or discern the, the physical phenomena beyond the concept, then we can overcome that kind of uh, desire or covetousness uh, abhijja. So with a strong concentration and a continuous mindfulness, we will see physical phenomena changing every moment, impermanence. And there is uh, no, nothing permanent, everlasting. Everything is changing. And then our desire or attachment uh, become weaker and weaker. So desire and attachment is uh, mainly responsible for our mental and uh, physical distress. Uh, we always desire this and that. Uh, we never satisfy with the, what we have. Such insatiable desire is uh, wholly responsible for our mental and uh, physical distress. That desire lead us to straight to the soga uh, worry. So when we want something and uh, we don't get it, and then we feel upset and uh, we worry about it. So in this way, the, our worry and anxiety are totally related to the attachment or desire or insatiable desire. And then when the soka, I mean the sorrow and limitation, sorrow will lead to limitation, very strong and a bitter, severe uh, worry. So basically, uh, these uh, mental and uh, physical distress are related to insatiable desire, we call abhijja or loba or tanna. 
That's what we call <coughs> Samudhya Sajya. Uh, Samudhya means the source or the suffering. So desire or attachment is uh, the main source or the suffering or the main cause or the suffering. So when we see, when we discern these physical phenomena like tension, tightness, without identifying them as I or mine, then we develop mindfulness. We can reduce uh, samudhya sajya, the, the source of suffering, I mean, sensation, insatiable desire, and uh, worry and anxiety. So by observing uh, the physical phenomena, we can, is, we can discern physical phenomena. Uh, the more we discern uh, real physical phenomena, uh, the less or uh, the pure uh, desire become. The pure the desire, then the happier or uh, the more blissful uh, we will become. Among the the objects to observe, among the meditative objects to observe, the body is uh, the most obvious. So that's why the Buddha described kaya nupasana, the awareness of body or contemplation of body uh, as a first uh, contemplation. By observing body, and uh, by seeing or discerning physical phenomena, and uh, our understanding of the body becomes deeper and uh, deeper. So here we have the Vipassana guideline, very important Vipassana guideline in Pali. It is said the Yathabhagadam Vipassana Bini Veso. The meaning is uh, Vipassana should be developed by observing whatever is uh, present or whatever is uh, most prominent. That's a very important uh, guideline for vipassana practice. So among the objects, physical phenomena, physical body is uh, obviously the most prominent. By observing body, we can see, we can discern physical phenomena and uh, the mental phenomena behind. So if we fail to observe our body, then we cannot know, we cannot become aware of the truth, what really happening to us. Then we cannot overcome the mental defilements. Then there will be no chance for us to be liberated the, the sangha or suffering. So our psychophysical com compound is uh, always changing. So physical and mental phenomena arise and pass away. So this body is uh, tortured by impermanence constantly or continuously. So it's uh, just uh, simply suffering. But uh, we think our body is everlasting. Our body is something desirable or beautiful. That's uh, simply illusion. We think uh, we take uh, something torturous as something pleasant. We take something impermanent as something permanent. Uh, that's uh, illusion. And then also this psychophysical phenomena are changing every moment according to their condition, not according to our way or our wish. So there is uh, no soul or I or ego uh, that control or that, be, uh, that possess this mind and body. But uh, we think our mind and body are I or our own. So that's also illusion. So this mind and body, psychophysical compound are impermanent, 
unsatisfactory and or stressful, and then there is uh, no everlasting I or ego. If we think this mind and body are something lasting or something beautiful or the something we possess, that's simply a uh, wrong view. Uh, we call deity, mecha deity. Mecha means wrong, deity means view, wrong view or illusion. So the Buddha, the teachers or the living beings or human beings and the divine beings, he taught us to see, to watch our body or ourselves. And first of all, to contemplate in and out breath. By focusing on in and out breath, we can see, we can discern uh, the physical phenomena and uh, mental phenomena. And then there will be no room or chances for desire and discontent, which are totally based on the illusion. Thus our mind become purified. By listening Dhamma, uh, Dhamma practice, how to practice meditation, uh, we understand the practice and the method. And uh, during the practice, we keep precepts, moral precepts. Uh, we don't break any precepts. So we develop uh, the sila meganga, the, the path of purification uh, as a virtue or sila, um, moral contact. So here is uh, three kinds of moral contacts, uh, sama vajja, sama kamanda, and uh, sama ajiva, referring from the wrong speeches, sama vajja, uh, referring from wrong actions, sama kamanda, and uh, referring from uh, wrong livelihood, sama ajiva. So during the meditation retreat, we develop these three kinds of the virtues, uh, qualities, virtuous quality. In this way, we develop sila meganga, the, the virtue, uh, the path of purification. And uh, by noting rising, falling, or the abdomen, and uh, we can see the psychophysical phenomena uh, changing. And uh, to see psychophysical phenomena, we have to put great effort. And uh, that's what we call sama vayama, uh, right effort. We make effort, uh, we make attempt to see real physical phenomena, mental phenomena. And there is a courage uh, to overcome mental defilements. That's uh, what is called viriya or sama vayama. And uh, by developing mindfulness, uh, we can develop the concentration. The mind is uh, focused on the rising, falling, or the abdomen. Uh, the mind no longer wanders away. The mind uh, no longer restless. And then there arises the concentration. That is called samadhi, uh, sama samadhi meganga, the, the path or the uh, noble, noble path, uh, samadhi concentration. And then we develop the uh, insight and vipassana, insight and uh, mindfulness by noting rising, falling concurrently. And then there will be no room or, or less chances for desire and uh, discontent to take place. So when the, the, there is a less uh, pure wants or pure wishes, and there are more uh, higher degree of happiness and uh, contentment and take place. 
So we think this body is uh, beautiful and uh, lasting, that's an uh, illusion. Uh, we think this body and uh, mind are never changing, ever the same, ever lasting, that's an uh, illusion. And uh, we think this mind and uh, body are something pleasant and uh, something pleasurable, uh, that's also illusion. Uh, even though we think this mind and uh, body are something we possess. Actually, this mind and body gradually getting old, and um, uh, it's happened uh, something we don't want, and then everything happened to the mind and body. So this mind and body is called anatta, is uh, we cannot control, we cannot uh, gain control over our mind and body. It's uh, changing all the time against our way or our wish. So unless we see the truth of the mind and the body, we get attached to our mind and the body as I or mine or something everlasting. So if we see, if we watch the mind and the body, and we can, as uh, guided by Satipatthana meditation, and uh, we can realize the true nature of the mind and the body. So in this case, the Kaya Nupasana, the contemplation of the body, is uh, uh, for, uh, uh, for, the, for realization of the, the true nature of the body. True nature of the body is uh, the body is actually something uh, disgusting, uh, foul and uh, filthy in nature. It's not something really beautiful. It's something uh, disgusting and uh, filthy. And also changing, uh, ever changing its uh, nature. And also is uh, uh, tortured by the impermanence. So it's called dukkha, it's suffering. So without seeing the true nature of the mind and the body, we human beings become greedy and selfish. There are two types of beings, or human, basically. Uh, one is uh, uh, the human being with the strong attachment, strong desire, or strong, uh, strong uh, greed a very greedy human. And another kind of human is uh, with a very strong illusion, very deep delusion. So to overcome such very strong greed or craving or attachment, so awareness of body or contemplation of body is uh, very good is uh, contemplation of body is uh, directly counter, uh, counteract the attachment to the body, attachment to the material things. So to overcome the attachment to body and attachment to material things, we should observe the body so that we can see the true nature of the body. So. That's why the commentary recommended us to observe the body to counteract the strong and deep attachment to the body and uh, physical objects. So and the Buddha encouraged us to watch or to contemplate our body. If we contemplate our body like the in our breath, concentration we get strong and then we can see physical phenomena changing ever changing we can realize impermanence and once we realize impermanence the lower greed or selfishness we become weaker and weaker the weaker the attachment and selfishness or greed the happier we will become in nature. So in this way, the, uh, we can find Dharma in our self, 
in our body by observing the physical phenomena like in our breath. That's the way we can be liberated from mental and physical distress. And then we can uh, see the truth and then we develop the, the faith and the confidence in the Dharma. This is how we can overcome the loba or the greed or attachment, which we call sanyojana, sanyojana. That means that the bind us to the sansara, the round of birth and death. So the, for, this is uh, the purpose for which we develop the contemplation of the body. So now today time is up. So zero in conclusion, which, which you may you be able to develop the uh, mindfulness or contemplation of the body until you experience ultimate peacefulness or nibbana. <laughs>